Hey, Foot Clan, it's Tuesday. That means waiver wire time. What do you do with Wayne Gallman? How valuable is he? How much fab do you spend? Do you blow the waiver priority? We go through all the names at all the positions and break down the latest news. Stay tuned. Zorro.com is where you'll find everything you need for businesses of any size in almost any industry. They have tools, equipment, and supplies for everything you need. Whether you need stuff for industries like electrical, plumbing, contracting, manufacturing, or more, Zorro's got it from brands you know and trust. And Zorro.com offers amazing customer service from real people based in the U.S. Visit Zorro.com slash footballers to sign up for Z-Mail and get 15% off your first order. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Fantasy football is a cruel mistress. Oh, yes. Tuesday, September 24th. I'll tell you why in a minute. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. It's waiver day. We've got news. We've got streaming quarterbacks, streaming defensive picks for week four. We had a Monday night football game last night. I was going mano y mano with Al Borland, one of our producers. It was looking dire as a David Montgomery owner for me. Oh, my gosh fell behind he had Chris Thompson I had David Montgomery and it was kind of head to head and I felt good going into the night and then Matt Nagy made me want to uh, pass away Uh, (laughs) so we get down to this final drive for the Bears and they kill the clock and Montgomery breaks off a 25 yard run and he's getting the ball over and over again for the first time on the night and you finally see some of that patience and vision and uh, tackle breaking and I've got a five point lead I mean, this is uh, is under, done. under two minutes left, and here we go. Here we go with uh, oh, two Chris Thompson dump offs, including a game high thirty three yard catch and run to beat me by point six. Oh man! On literally the last meaningful offensive play of the game, eighteen seconds left after that play. At that time, I thought maybe eighteen seconds left in my natural life i'm i'm surprised you're here this morning andy it's fine i'm totally fine this now is, yeah did you hear about our writer kyle yates he nope. he had the exact same experience where he lost the game on that chris thompson 33 yarder that you say is practically the last play of the game but then won it on the sack with the bears defense that was the last play of the game oh my gosh fantasy football well that is insane so yes i am embittered as any fantasy football player would be after a tough defeat however we have another week of football ahead yes. of us can turn it around obviously alborn has forward. alborn has been relieved of his duties <laughs> right He's been fired, and we are looking, looking for yeah, a new producer. Yeah, he's so he's looking there. for work as well. I don't want to completely ruin this oh, man's that's life. Kind of I want to find him another solid letter of recommendation. Yeah, well, for you guys, from you guys, right, right. <laughs> uh, any other takeaways from Monday Night Football, guys? I wrote down oh, Matt yes. Nagy is an annoying something. Uh, my uh, he he's difficult to he's he's a fart sniffer, guys. Matt Nagy is a fart sniffer. He. I, I a, see where you're going. He had a good year last year. And this all comes down to a Khalil Mack problem. Okay. John Gruden thought he was a great coach. Lost Khalil Mack. Tra- traded him away. <clears throat> traded him thought away. Thought he was good enough to deal with thought it. Thought he was super smart. Yeah. Uh, traded him away. Hasn't worked out. Matt Nagy receives Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack ruins opposing offenses. Matt Nagy believes he is the smartest man alive, Matt Nagy starts to run Cordell Patterson and Mike Davis and Tariq Cohen in the backfield, can't use David Montgomery, doesn't run it around the goal line, which costs them on a goal line interception. He had some good play calls last night. The Redskins helped out, but he is an unreliable head coach for fantasy purposes. You cannot trust Matt Nagy. Yeah, I I totally agree that I think Matt Nagy thinks his farts smell good. (laughs) I'm down with that. But, Jason, we've been over this. But We all do. <laughs> yes. 
But we all I, think Matt Nagy's farts smell good. Ooh, not, yes, actually, not. I've but been around the man. Here's the thing: after a beef sandwich, if they <laughs> smelled like Andy Reid's, that wait, I mean, oh, you know Andy Reid's? Well, I'm just saying. I imagine Andy Reid, the the coaching tree. Uh, it's I like see. McVeigh's I cologne, see. only yeah. it's different. <laughs> it's Andy Reid's Andy oh, Reid flatulence. Tree. Yes. <laughs> wow. So Doug and Doug Peterson's got it too. Well, yeah, his are sweet. Get the men some Beano. Go, go on, Jason. Uh, yeah, where was I? Um, yeah, so I, I actually do think Matt Nagy is a good offensive coach, a good offensive mind, uh, and I believe if he had a quarterback that could run the offense, that you would actually see that some of his designs are are good. Now, you can having a better quarterback doesn't put Core Daryl Patterson on the bench. No, but I think you ignore those things. Uh, when when they're when the offense is working as a whole, obviously Trubisky had a fine game, three yeah, touchdowns game. in the second quarter, but most of that was gifted by the defense. Super short fields, every pass from Trubisky was like two yards deep, uh, is how it felt. So uh, you know, but I I agree with you. You can't trust a bear right now. You cannot trust not on the not on the field and not in the wild. Other than Jay Grizz, <laughs> yes, Jay, you're fine. Other than Jay Grizz, I don't think you could try. You can, can what do you, you do trust with Allen Robinson? What do you do with Montgomery now? So, he, you know, last week, 18 carries. This week, taken off the field in strange circumstances. I thought he was going to have two goal line carries on and those both those plays. So He should have. You know, he, and then he still ends up in double digits after the last drive. It, it's just a strange situation. I, you know, forcing, frustrating. Forcing Patterson in there to play running back when you have – David Montgomery and Tariq Cohen is just baffling. And, and to Mike me. Davis. Yeah. And, yeah. It was just like, we, okay, we moved past the Mike Davis problem. And Nagy's like, hmm, what do, we, what do we do here? Ah, yes. We'll put in Cordero Patterson. Honestly, the biggest takeaway from last night's game in reality is that Terry McLaurin is right now the primary read for Case Keenum. Keenum had it an up and down. Ugly, then competent performance. Once again, 332 yards, two touchdowns. Seemingly willing to consistently throw the ball downfield in this game as they tried to come back. And McLaurin looks like a legit he is. talent. That uh, touchdown reception was – that was an incredible catch with, with the DB draped all over him, a hand – in there also trying to strip the ball away. Like th That was an incredible catch for a rookie. I, I love McLaurin. Yeah, I, I scooped him up and everywhere I could, but I'll be honest, I'm worried long-term through the season. You know, some rookies hit a rookie wall, but you combine that with at some point Haskins has to come in, right? now. But that now could be not good yet. for him because of the co collegiate connection. Like Haskins at least – now I guess I guess the argument would be made Haskins isn't going to throw for 330 it's, yards a game like that is Keenum. That's my whole argument is the yardage of the offense is not going to be there for Case Ke for for Haskins the way it is with Keenum. I I believe in McLaurin. I do too. I believe I believe in him season long. So I, even if they switch to Haskins, even if they switch, maybe even more. Yeah, Ooh. even more. I mean, That's just high. so you know, Case Keenum right now. The three games we've seen with Terry McLaurin, he's on pace for 5,000 passing yards. I don't care. Okay. Because this team is going to be down in every single game, and Dwayne Haskins is going to have to figure things out, and he's got a guy that – look, if, tar if Terry McLaurin has a, a greater target share with Haskins and he throws for 50 fewer yards, I don't care. I just think McLaurin's a, a talent that they need to develop, and I, he, is he going to score 16 touchdowns? No, no. So, if you know, last night – Paul Richardson technically had a better game, eight for eighty-three and a touchdown. McLaurin six for seventy and a touchdown. Taylor Gabriel six for seventy-five and three. I don't think we need to talk about this game. No, anymore. all right, or ever, ever again. Chris Thompson <laughs> taking me out. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Now, as a fantasy owner, when you lose by less than a point. You start to think about possible pathways for a stat correction. And I'm remembering at the end of the game that inside handoff, Borland, where Chris Thompson took it inside and then gained like a yard and then the Bears acted like there, there was, was a fumble, fumble mm. that he recovered. So I'm hoping that we go to the scorer's table on Thursday. And there's a minus and one. And there is a real fumble on that play. I don't know how, but uh, that's my desperate hope. 
and I would, I'd rehire you in a minute. <laughs> I'd rehire you quick. Pete Carroll said, we still believe in Chris Carson despite the ball security issues through three weeks and then said that he would show that they still believed in him with actions on the field. So Yeah, he, he went on to say, we get to play the Cardinals, so he's going to have a great game. That was a quote? No, but it, it was in his mind. That was his subtext. I think Chris Carson, you know, my worries for him long-term will begin if this week is not a success. Against Arizona, don't know Rashad Penny's status, but Carson will have work. He had 15 carries last week. Give him 15 against Arizona. As Jason said, they, 2, won't, yards. they won't poke it out, poke the ball out. Kyle Shanahan believes Tevin Coleman has a good chance to be back following the bye week along with Jalen Hurd. Try to trade your... Matt Burita? Yeah, uh, I would hold on to Burita, but Mostert will get put on the bench, I would imagine. And my name is Jeff Wilson. We'll see if he's even on the roster anymore. This was big news injury update. Panthers quarterback Cam Newton believed to be dealing with a list Frank injury. Plan is now to rehab it. It looks like a four to eight week injury. Kyle Allen will be the man in Carolina. Yeah, this was. This was unfortunate. I mean, that preseason. The foot is fine. The yeah, the preseason foot. Don't even ask me about it. Clearly derailed the whole season for Cam Newton. It stinks, but the truth is, Kyle Allen might be better for your Curtis Samuel, your DJ Moore at this point. It's possible. All right, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Get it, get it right now, Ooh. or else you won't get all the latest news. Or else you won't notes, have it and information. That that too, Mike. Put me in, coach. All right, waiver day. Now, this is a day that's going to go down in waiver wire infamy, history, everything. Because on this waiver wire, I don't know if you guys have realized what is happening. There, th I do not realize. I'm there are bated breath. There are four players from the New York Giants that are worth picking up this week. Four. Write down where you were when this was... Like, this will never happen again. <laughs> Four players from the Giants are good pickups. All right. We'll see if uh, that's true or not in a couple of weeks. The, <laughs> sure. The wide receivers, the probably owned but worth checking on guys, Sterling Shepard, Marvin Jones, Terry McLaurin, Demarcus Robinson. Now, Mike has been floating Demarcus Robinson in our dynasty league as a yes. little as a little point rental. Are you feeling confident that Tyreek Hill is going to miss this upcoming week? I honestly have no idea because we have. But I know if he does, Robinson. then I'm playing Demarcus Robinson. Sure, sure. Shepard is 75% on Marvin Jones, 68%. McLaurin, 66% right now. Uh, Shepard had a big game, 7 for 100 and 1 on 9 targets. One thing noted by our team, he ran 86% of his routes from the slot. So mm. there was some question as to whether when Golden Tate returns, the Sterling Shepard see some of that target volume diminish. I imagine it will. Yes, it, it, it likely does. However... Without Saquon Barkley, if we'll talk Wayne Gallman as a must-add player, but Wayne Gallman's not as good as Saquon Barkley. Like they're gonna what? <laughs> Sorry. Well, I should have warned everyone that I was about to blow minds. I apologize for that. They're gonna have to throw more because they're not gonna be able to hand off to Wayne Gallman and expect him to have some insane twenty-five yard run. And and he's nowhere near. I mean, very few players are anywhere near Saquon when it comes to the receiving ability sure. at the running back position. So those little dump-offs, they could go to Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram. Uh, yeah, I think Sterling Shepard's a great play this week. All right, in the more available wide receiver category, what are some of your favorite names? Personally, I think Philip Dorsett is a must-add with what's going on. Antonio Brown, a lot of three wide receiver sets in New England. Dorsett should be on the field like – if you want to view him as Josh Gordon light for sure. your team, I just think he's one of those situations where everybody views Josh Gordon with a certain trade value and throws Dorsett to the sideline where they're both on the field. I don't think 
Brady has any sort of preference there. And Dorsett's been very, very productive. And we have uh, Julian Edelman is dealing with his chest injury. The latest reports are it's supposed to be minor, so I'm not expecting him to miss time. But you, you certainly have to factor that in. And these Patriots, they, they look like the old Patriots of we want to run up the score through the air. And Philip Dorsett has been heavily involved except except for week two because Antonio Brown came in and they forced him the ball. But, but weeks one and week three where Antonio Brown's not on the team, Philip Dorsett's had a good game. They take on Buffalo this week. It's a tougher matchup. Yeah. Certainly you imagine Tredavious game. White is on Gordon? Probably. So this could be another sneaky start, I think, yes. for Dorsett, especially with this being a game for the division lead. Right. That's fascinating. That'll be a good In watch. Buffalo. Yeah. So. Oh, it exciting. is in Buffalo? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I think the, the game line right now is New England minus seven. Yeah. What, Jay? Good good luck with that Buffalo. Oh. I think New England covers. Yes. Okay. I do too. DJ Chark. Do, three do, straight do, weeks do, with do, a do, touchdown. Do. DJ Chark or Terry McLaurin? Who would you rather have on your roster? I'd rather have McLaurin. Terry McLaurin. Yeah, McLaurin, but I think DJ Chark is an av- he is a pickup. But we'll see how he can perform this week with of course Gardner Minshew. Can he keep it going? But we just saw Denver and Chris Harris uh, Harris was basically able to shut down Devontae Adams. And it. I would think that the primary cover for Harris will be DJ Chark, but we'll see. You also have Nelson Aguilar, 54% owned, two touchdowns last week, 12 targets. But is, We do expect Alshon Jeffrey yes. to potentially play on Thursday, so that's a tough call on Aguilar. Not, not only that, but this is the Screen Bay defense, I believe, is for real. You know, there was a lot of talk last week about Emmanuel Sanders. You want to play him, but the matchup looks a little poor, and it, and it was. The Green right. Bay secondary was great. And so Nelson Aguilar, if Alshon's back against Green Bay, I'm not digging that as much as, you know, the the exact other side of the field. Marquez Valdez-Scantling against right. Philadelphia, I would rather play over Nelson Aguilar, assuming Alshon is back. Another name I want to bring up is Deontay Johnson because he played on 79% of snaps for Philadelphia. I'm sorry, for Pittsburgh, and he's a rookie. He's completely unowned. He was 3 for 52 on a touchdown. Mason Rudolph looked bad, but we also did not see the James Washington-Mason Rudolph combination. Right. So Deontay Johnson's a player that they want to develop, especially in a lost season. And if Juju's not going to command the kind of target share we – thought he could before the season, which seems so far to be the case. Certainly doesn't have a, any more of a rapport with Mason Rudolph than Deontay Johnson does. So I think in deeper leagues, he would be an interesting stash. Has Cincinnati defense this week, but I like most of the other names we mentioned more than Deontay Johnson. Right yeah, now. The, the tough part is this is a really good matchup. So if you want to grab him and play him, go for that glory shot, sure. But it, more than likely, you're going to grab him, stash him, Wait and see what happens. Oh, he has a good game. Then are you going to put him in the next week against Baltimore? You know, so now you're stashing him for multiple weeks for Mason Rudolph. I do think Deontay Johnson is a talented player, could break out. Obviously, the Steelers have a history of drafting wide receivers very well. He was their number one wide receiver on their board uh, going into the draft. So, yeah, worth a stash, but I agree with you, Andy. Other player, I would rather have some of these other guys, if they're available, the MVS, Dorsett. What we about, didn't mention McCall Hardman. Say, what about Hardman, Jay? What, where are you temperature-wise? I mean, he's only getting you know two to three catches a week. However, that's all you need. <laughs> that's all you need from a wide receiver. When they're 90 yards, um, I it's it's 100% Tyreek for me. Uh, for me, if Tyreek is gone this week, then you need to start McCall Hardman. And if he's back, I wouldn't start McCall Hardman this week. All right, we're going to talk running back waiver pickups, but first we want to thank Muggsy for supporting this podcast. See, getting a good pair of jeans is like Chris Thompson falling down about 20 <laughs> yards before the end of that run. I think Al Borland would say it's like Chris Thompson. Yeah, I know he would. I know he would. They are the most comfortable jeans ever made. Our manager, Damon, just picked up a few pairs this past week, tried them on. Said they're unbelievable. I love their shorts. Yeah. Yeah, you just picked up some of those as well. Muggsies are real jeans that literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. 
the magic, Jason Moore, is in the proprietary fabrics. Is that why? We don't have access to these fabrics. They are very secretive. Well, I have access to it through buying Muggsy jeans. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, a blend of high-tech materials that make these jeans mind-blowingly soft. I love mine. They're the only jeans I have. The guys at Muggsy are so confident that you'll love them. They offer free U.S. shipping in return, so comfort is 100% guaranteed. Do your legs a favor. Grab your own pair of jeans. They're sweeping the nation by heading to Muggsy.com and using the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That's M-U-G-S-Y.com and use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. Oh, and Foot Clan, are you an Amazon Prime member? Yes. Huh? Well, then, did you know you have Thursday night football? Oh, you don't have cable? You have Thursday night football. It doesn't matter. That's right. Thursday night football has returned to Prime Video for a third season. Cool thing is you can catch all the action on your TV or on the web or on your mobile anywhere in the world. Oh, you got to take your kid to practice. Don't worry. You pull out that mobile phone. Amazon Prime has it, and the experience is next level. They have this x-ray feature. You can access the next-gen stats, play history, team information. Now it's available on iOS, on Android, Fire Tablets, Fire TV. If you're ready to hear a new take on the game, you could switch over to Sport Broadcast Legends, Hannah Storm, and Andrea Kramer for the play-by-play. So if you don't have cable or simply want to experience the future of football, Tune in this Thursday. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern, and kickoff is at 8.20 p.m. Eastern. Also available on Fox and NFL Network. NFL Network simulcast subject to change. Thursday Night Football is presented by Bud Light Platinum. All right. Hey, Jason. Yeah? Those next-gen stats, they're, they're, they're incredible. What are, how are they powered? Oh, <laughs> they're powered by AWS. Uh, I just wasn't sure. You weren't sure? Wasn't sure. I hear they have the proof. I hear those commercials, Mike. <laughs> Through, last night, I heard heard one of the commercials in the house. I'm not happy with the audio mix, Mike. I think I have nothing to do with it. I think I they need more volume this for these touchdowns. The touchdowns at the end of these commercials, where you're really giving it a lot of oomph. oomph. I feel like they it's should just too turn, low. They should just turn off everything else and just go the and voice. just have your voice. Nothing else. You can't even hear the crowd. Why nothing. didn't you sneak in a little? AWS has proof. Go to the fantasyfootballers.com. Get the podcast. I tried. I think okay. it, it, it was really funny last night. They cut it night. off. Um, I'm making the kids dinner, and then and my boys, hey, hey, Dad, you're on TV. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I like how Reddit every day, it's like three or four times after a commercial, they're like, is that Mike Wright from the Fantasy Footballers? It sounds a lot like him. Is I that am, his friend? I am still every week getting – Congratulations, because people can't tell our voices apart for some reason. Um, before we go to running backs, I need to do the Foot Clan and our producer a maybe a service, maybe Doubt a it. hardship. Brooks has he has he wants Dante Pettis everywhere he can get him. He's messaged me. He's a co-owner one of my teams. He's he is putting this out there that he believes Dante Pettis can still have a second year breakout. He's his snaps have been going up. He had the injury early on. So I'm not picking him up personally. They got a bye week. I don't want to hold him through it. But if you're out there and you believe in Brooks, I know there's a lot of you out there, he's calling his shot. He's saying Dante Pettis is talented. The opportunity is rising. He could still break out in the second half of the year. I'm th that's for you, Brooks. Thank you, Jason. You he's summarized been, it perfectly. All right. He had it, a game-winning touchdown last week. Do you get extra points if they win the game with the touchdown? No, but you oh, may okay. get extra snaps the next okay. time, next he's, game. He's but. not wrong. It's fair. That he may get extra snaps? Yeah, like, yeah. we're not Jay rewarded. Jalen Hurd is coming back, too, after the bye. So they got Debo Samuel and Rich James and Jalen Hurd and Marquise Goodwin and George Kittle. So. And Dante Pettis. And Dante Pettis. So. All right, you gave Brooks his day in the sun. Brooks, you're also fired. Mm. Along with Al Borland. Foot Clan, you we know, are looking oh. for producers. <laughs> you know Borland. Oh, and, come on. And Borland beat me, so... Uh, Wayne Gallman, I want to know what you really believe about Wayne Gallman because we know that Saquon's going to be out for a considerable amount of time. He has yes. They have Washington, Minnesota, New England on the schedule. I would not be surprised to see this team make a roster move in the coming days heading into the weekend. Gallman had 34 receptions as a rookie. But when you look at the only game he had double-digit carries in last year, very inefficient, two-point-something a carry, I don't know right now, and, and I know it's our job to 
quote unquote, no and make a call. And I'm going to do that. But I don't know if Wayne Gallman is going to get the level of work that matches the fab spend people may right. may invest tomorrow. So, you know, out of a hundred dollar fan budget, what are you really spending on Gallman rental with, you know, Minnesota is going to be a tough matchup in new England's a tough matchup. Daniel Jones threw the ball one time on 25 routes run by Wayne Gallman. He threw it one time to Gallman. Clearly he was looking downfield. So where are you guys at with, you know, this I, quote unquote gold mine on the waiver wire? So I don't view Gallman as a must add me. He's going to be expensive. He's going to cost your priority. He is a team dependent ad for me because I can't imagine starting him over a lot of other running backs. What about over a guy like David Montgomery? Would you start Wayne Gallman this upcoming week? That's, you know, I probably would not. I probably would against uh, Washington. Correct. He has Washington yeah. and the bears have Minnesota, I believe, but there are teams, you know, that have really their second running back. They have no options. You know, they, they were plugging the hole with Raheem Mostert and he's on by, and then Tevin Coleman's coming back, and you have to make a move. In that case, then you, you've you got to go out and buy him. I just I don't believe Wayne Gallman's going to be very good for fantasy. It's a bad team. He's not Saquon. Bad matchups upcoming two of the next three weeks. So I'm not excited. I mean, I, I'm, he's a must-add. He's a must-add for he's me. He's a must-add. Yeah. It's just how much you spend on it. Well, I like... Would you spend 50 fab, Mike, no. to add Gallman for potentially eight weeks? No, I'm not going 50%. If, if I'm in a waiver system and I have the number one priority, I will burn it. I will burn it for Wayne Gallman. If, probably even if I don't need a running back on my team because I know someone else is trying to get Wayne Gallman. So I'm, I'm also playing defense. He becomes a tradable asset. He's a starting running back for, for the majority of the fantasy season. If, if for fab, I mean, in the 30s. Okay. And we're in the 30%. Like, there's a lot of teams, like Jason said, that they really need a running back who's going to get some volume. I side with you, Andy, that I think they will bring somebody in. I don't know if people caught it out there, but Orleans Darkwa, who had his time for this team, but he tweeted out a gif of implying he was waiting patiently for them to call him. But a lot of names Patient, have been – Patiently or desperately? Desperately. Mm -hmm. Desperately. Impatiently maybe. is a yeah. better word. But I, a lot of names have been floated. Jay Ajayi – uh, do they trade for Kenyon Drake? I mean, a lot of things have been floated out there. If you told me Goldman's the guy and they don't add anybody, I would move my fab. Like if I knew the future, for example, sure, I would be willing to spend you know forty bucks on fab to just have that guy that can be in my lineup every week, even if it's a you know ten, eleven, twelve point play. But I just don't have the confidence that they're not going to share the load, right? And and I don't either. Like this isn't like we find out today, Dalvin Cook is going to miss eight weeks. Like Alexander Madison is a guy I would spend 50% of my fab budget on. I would go hard after it. I'm still going after Gallman. Yep. I'm just not, I'm not going to cripple my fab completely Sounds to like get him. A good summary of what we're all saying is that we don't necessarily see the ceiling for Wayne Gallman. This is not a Tony Pollard league, right. league winning ceiling. This is a team that is probably going to have some growing pains with Daniel Jones against Minnesota, New England at a minimum. So Gallman's yeah, upside matches. is, but uh, but I will say like, are maybe they go from being a bad team with Eli Manning to just, to being an okay team like Daniel Jones looked, he looked great. He didn't just look pretty good. He looked great against Tampa Bay. Yeah, the the only thing I'll speak positively for for Gallman is that this is a bad week for running backs on waivers. In my opinion, there's not a lot of guys that I just love that I could scoop up and play. So it so. You know, but obviously, Gallman is one of those guys. He's now a starting running back with very little depth behind him. Uh, the next name I would actually pull out. Oh, I'm curious your guys' take on Daryl Williams. Yes, he would be next man up for Kansas City uh, running he, back. The, it, probably. He, yeah. I mean, he needs to. Right now, he's third string. Uh, but Shady reaggravated the ankle. And Damian Williams missed the game. We don't have enough information at this time in the week to know if either or both are going to be gone this Sunday. But he's a game changer. He's a guy that, right. you know, if he is the starter, you, you've got probably a top 10 back. Yeah, and, and the truth is, is I mean, this is part of fantasy, shooting your shot. Your, your waivers run, whether you have all the news on these guys or not. Right. So 
Darrell Williams, I, it makes a lot of sense because you are talking about an offense going into Detroit that is moving the football, but it's a probably a one-week rental of sorts with Darrell Williams. Gallman represents a longer-term situation, even if maybe the upside's capped. So I would spend more on Gallman than Darrell Williams myself. Yes, I, I agree with that. Uh, Raheem Mostert. You know, Mostert and Jeff Wilson, I don't even want to talk no. about them because they they have a bye week and then Tevin Coleman's supposed to come back and, you know, you really can't bank on San Francisco having multiple goal line opportunities for Wilson, so I'm not really stashing him. So would you cut either guy? I would cut both. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally I would, get I that. I would, like, cut – if I have if Mostert, I, have, I would cut him for Gallman or yeah, Daryl Williams. Yeah. He's not – like I would still prefer to hold on to Mostert through the bye week We because it's not for sure – that Coleman's coming back. It's just in the range of outcomes. Cleveland and the Rams, the two matchups for mo uh, the running backs in San Francisco when they come back. Other names, Ronald Jones, Frank Gore, Carlos Hyde. Are you interested in any of those guys? Frank Gore has a terrible matchup. Carlos Hyde came back to earth, and Ronald Jones is on the Buccaneers, and I just want to stay so far clear of that situation. <laughs> if I had to pick one of these three guys, it would probably be Ronald Jones. Gross. The, the, the hardest thing with that situation is that you've had a competent running back for three consecutive weeks. Yes. You just haven't had the same one. So the Bruce Arian system and the running back being productive in it is proving true, but you don't get to start Tampa Bay running back X. You have to pick one, and that's proving to be frustrating for fantasy owners. At least Jones has the unproven future career side to him. But if he comes out next week, I mean, he had 15 touches last week. What if he has five? He looked really good week one, and then he looked really good last week. I know. But, yeah, exactly. If he comes out, you can't start him, right? There's no way you can be confident enough to be like, well, he's the guy now. He's going to get a ton of work. I need him at least heating up. Yeah, you need the back-to-back. I need, -back. I need at least back-to-back. -back. And even then, you st still could just be thrown into a trap. Rashad Penny is 62% owned. He should be picked up. You should oh. pick Rashad Penny up. If the fumbling problems continue for Chris Carson, if he doesn't take advantage of the Arizona matchup, if Rashad Penny is healthy and active, he may take advantage of Arizona, and that may change the perception of him for the rest of the season, both for fantasy owners and for Pete Carroll. Yeah, I don't think Pete Carroll is going to be like, well, Penny had a really good game, but it was against Arizona, so that's not valuable. <laughs> I mean, he will take that game and run with it if he can stay healthy. He hurt himself in a walkthrough, guys. That's hard in, to do. In a walkthrough. Now here, here's the thing. <laughs> like, look, how do you pull look, a hammy in yeah. a walkthrough? Okay, okay. I'm sure they're jogging. Have has anyone at this table? That's a jog through, Jason. Has, completely different. Has anyone at this table ever hurt themselves jumping into a pool? Yeah, that was me. Has anyone at this table ever hurt themselves stepping off of a curb? Yeah, me. I did that. Mm. And you're mocking the guy. Who hey, got Jason got himself through. hurt sitting in a chair yeah, okay, yeah. during the show. Has anyone at show. this table ever blown out a knee yes. sitting down? Yes. Uh, Why do you have to make this a... Ever thrown out their back grabbing a t-shirt off a of bed? Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Hold on. You threw out your back <laughs> yeah. picking up your, your shirt? Yeah, it was, it was just... Not even the getting dressed motion, the, the picking up I motion. I just reached to the left and was on the ground. I, Come on. You when went we, down? Oh, yeah. Went down and then couldn't move. Couldn't get up. I, like, <laughs> had to scream for help. This is this is like a decade ago. This is Broken Bowl Games 2 oh, this time. You were a young man when I you was did it? younger. I was fit. I, was, I didn't have this belly, but I had a bad back because that shirt. You reached for a shirt and you went down. So, Rashad Penny, we forgive you. Yes. Uh, I would rather have Rashad Penny <laughs> than anyone on this list not named Gallman. Obviously, if... If he's there because let's say let's say Penny doesn't even play this week, but then the following week Carson fumbles again. There, it's not just a Carson injury at this point; it's Carson injury or Carson fumble. Yeah, that it's gives hard because because you probably won't be starting him the week that the fumble happens, but at least he'll be on your roster for the week after. In that case, that being said, Carson could have a huge game against Arizona and reestablish himself. It's gonna be it's trepidatious times for mm -hmm. Chris Carson owners. Tight end wise, Will Disley. Oh, the big Montana. He is the pickup. It's it's pretty wide. Oh goodness. I Here. feel like you never believed in him, Mike. I I guilty as charged. I did not believe. 
I did not believe, but here I am. Yeah. Con- being country strong, big Montana, Will Disley. Like it's, it, it, he is, he has to be looked at as the truth now. Like he, he's getting target volume. He's not just a touchdown dependent tight end. He's one of those guys that can get you five for 50. That at the tight end position is very rare. Then you throw in touchdown upside. You throw in that he's playing Arizona. It's, ew, it's going to be, it's going to be a good game for Will Disney. Yeah. I mean, look, if you, you're the George Kittle owner. Right, and he's on by, and you need to pick Disley's someone up. Perfect. You pick up Disley, you're fine for this week against Arizona. I mean that, you know. It, look, he's tied with Mike Ditka for the third most tight end touchdowns through the first seven career games. This is my favorite stat of all time because it's so specific and outrageous. <laughs> through the first seven games, he's tied for third. It's a terrible stat, but it's with Ditka, so it's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's three games. Seven games. Oh, the first seven career games just had the skipped yeah. most of the season part in exactly. between. Well, it didn't have to be consecutively. Chris Herndon will be back after the bye week. A reminder now, I don't think you have to move on him now. He's not that kind of a must-own player with, you know, Darnold should maybe be back. So right. I would still, it's as long as he can stop smooching. I would still wait. Now, Herndon won't be back the first the week no. immediately after the bye right. week. It's, there's some time. So it's still two weeks away. So Chris Hernan will be a tight end that I think is a, is a pickup next week. I agree. And then Jason Witten still kind of on the field. He's doing Witten stuff. Three for 54 on four targets this past week. Would you, you know, if you're the – it's basically if you're the Kittle owner right now, who yeah. are you streaming? And I would prefer Disley, but if not, then Jason Wynn's fine. Look, I would Jason go, Wynn's going to end up as the tight end 12. It's just going to happen. Right. He always does. I, I would go Disley. Then I would actually go Vernon Davis against the New York Giants, mm. and then I would go Wynn. You know, the thing I didn't like about Vernon, because I had picked him up after the Jordan Reed news in one of our leagues because I have Kittle, and, you know, he had a lot of a lot of sprinkle sprinkled in yeah. last night. So Jeremy Vernon, sprinkle. Vernon was – and how about the dude? The play with the jump – when yeah. Vernon Davis went went to hurdle the defender, and the defender said, "No, I, I watched game tape on yeah, this man. I've seen this. He's move. about to jump over." Hey, I was just impressed with the vertical again from Vernon. Yes, but whenever you go from playing the Bears to playing the Giants, things get better. Sure, mm-hmm. fair, fair. All right, although three hundred thirty-two passing yards for Case Keenum, and not a lot of them going Vernon's way. Possible drop candidates. What do you guys think, Antonio Brown? Are you letting him go? I would. I'd let him go as well. I have to make this decision, and I am going to be dropping him. Yeah. Jarvis. In the keeper league. In the league of record, yeah. Yeah, I, I get it. I, I don't mean, have room to There's no IR right. spot. Yeah. Well, and he even if – yeah, he can't go in and IR. Exactly. I mean, there's no uh, – sorry. I mean, there's no IR eligibility for him, and you're, you are you got to stay nimble. you got to be, be able to move on the waiver wire. Jarvis Landry, Baker Mayfield. <sighs> I think you can – wow. I think you can drop him. Yeah, I mean, I I would I would drop Baker unless you're in one of those leagues where there's no quarterbacks on the waiver wire. It, it, otherwise, it, and and by no, I mean like you know, there's not Matthew Stafford on the waiver wire. It's like if Matthew Stafford's on the waiver wire, then I'm fine. You know, saying yeah, I can I can make roster transactions and move on from Baker. Then what do you do with Stephon Diggs? Because Diggs is in the same oh, Jarvis goodness. Landry draft capital. I mean, Diggs is in a worse position because you spent more on it. <laughs> I take Diggs. I put him as part of a package trade and hopefully people don't realize I'm sending them a poison pill. I think that's smart because yeah. Diggs as a accompaniment, like if you could send Diggs and James Connor and go get yourself a more reliable running back option. Right. Like right. Diggs and Connor for Chubb. The Dick Chubb owner is going to laugh in your face for that offer. Maybe. Not but, all of them. But yeah, you you'll not find the send, min- send not it the out. Nick Chubb owner that's a Minnesota Vikings fan. But that's a very specific <laughs> fantasy football player. Not the one that had Stephon Diggs win him a championship last year. Not who's one, also a Vikings fan. Not the one who's 27 years old, lives in, in Seattle, Washington. With the that Diggs, guy would with accept. The, the guy with the Diggs jersey yeah. on, over the mantle? I know that guy. Uh, Jared We're Goff. talking about you, Brian. Yeah, Jared Jared Goff. Uh, Rams offense kind of miss. He's, he's been very mad. So next week he is... He's at home versus Tampa. I'm not dropping him. Yeah, I, I'm fine I'll playing play him, him this week. Kenyon Drake, Tariq Cohen. 
I'm still holding Drake in hopes of the trade. I'm cutting Cohen. It's over. Yeah, that, I don't blame you there. What What are you hoping for? And you real? Are you like you wouldn't drop Kenyon Drake for like Wayne Gallman or Daryl Williams this week? I would put him in a capsule and send him into outer space. <laughs> I would not. You would not drop Kenyon Drake. You just I can't would, do it. I can't. Oh my him. god! Wow, man. I still think that's that a bad hold. He could be. That's a bad hold. Foot Clan, do not follow Hashtag my... Hashtag bad hole. Look, like, Kenyon Drake is out for the season. Jason's like, well... I just can't drop him. <laughs> He's good for my roster. Look, Foot Clan, listen to these two guys on Kenyon Drake. <laughs> not me. But I'm holding them. Uh, all right. Miles Sanders, what do you make of it? He was involved in the passing game. It was two really big receptions. This team is kind of funky. My defensive streamer is against them this week right now. They're finding their way on offense. I, I don't cut Miles Sanders yet. I do not cut him either. Yeah, I wouldn't cut him, but, man, the, the, the two fumbles, the Philly Riders are – like their their uh, opinion is like, what do the Eagles even do with Miles Sanders? How can we keep playing him right now? And that's not what you want to hear. Yeah, I mean, speaking of Miles Sanders, David Montgomery, until the last drive last night, you hadn't seen anything special from either player on the year. None of those big-time plays, nothing huge out of the backfield – you know, you go into the season with a narrative about these rookies and their ability to contribute. You do need to see production on the field, not just opportunity. Montgomery showed a little last night. Hopefully that drive teaches Matt Nagy if he's teachable and not just smelling. Well, we thought he learned from week two. We were wrong. We were. Fart sniffer. <laughs> Full stream ahead. Look, Mike, I'm fresh off a loss. No, like, it's... It's so enjoyable for me because it's like I'm looking in a mirror. Like, I have been that before, and, and then Adam Gase ended up getting a, a really bad nickname because I was so frustrated and so angry. You don't want to be called that. Show some play-calling chops. Stop that makes sniffing us your farts. That makes us respect you. All right, favorite. Don't tell me what to do, Mike. Favorite quarterback streamers for week four. Week four, I'm taking Phillip Rivers against Miami. Rivers had a 13-point week two, hit a lot of waiver wires. Last week was all right, almost led them back. But against Miami, this is a stone-cold lock for at least a passable performance, if not a great one. Yeah, oh, you'll I get actually, a great one. I actually believe Mike Williams is more involved this week. There's some – Travis Benjamin might miss this game. You're going to have Keenan Allen, Eckler, Jackson, Williams, and you get to play Miami. No, I, I I love all three of our streamers this week, but Philip Rivers is is a lock to have a great game in my opinion. I'm going with Matthew Stafford at home against Kansas City Chiefs. He's going to have to play catch up. I think he'll be able to, especially being at home. Uh, he, he's had some good games. He had a disappointing week last week, so I think a lot of people are going to be like, I don't want to play him. I still I still have the confidence to play him. Marvin Jones, Kenny Galladay, Hawkinson. Had three touchdowns should have that yeah. were two drops and one that was toe tap on the out of bounds line. Matthew Stafford had an unbelievable game if those things just turn around. Um, and against Kansas City, he's going to have to throw the ball. And I'm going with Daniel Jones because Daniel Jones is to me like you got to pick him up. You got to see what you have. He's taking on Washington. Uh, he had a great performance this past week, and the fact that he is willing to rush the ball and rush for touchdowns, that is a, that is a difference maker in fantasy football. We're going to be in a really tough spot if Daniel Jones comes out and balls against Washington because then you have him against Minnesota, and it'll be this really, really tough decision. But at least we'll take this one week at a time. Daniel Jones against Washington. Wait, so so I I was looking at the dog. I saw you had Case Keenum. I think Case Keenum, Case Keenum is a good streamer as well, but I'm pivoting because I think Daniel Jones is a is a guy that needs to be picked. Who up. would you rather start of those two guys, Andy? Daniel Jones by far. Case Keenum could get benched in this game if exactly. things go sour. Because I had putting Haskins in against the Giants is not the same as putting him in against the Bears, which is probably what prohibited it happening last night. Right. So if you, you know, I just don't want a guy that can get pulled. Two, throw two picks and get pulled. I had Case Keenum in the dock before last night where it was like, oh, crap, Haskins seasons could be coming. It really could. Here's a stupid question. Stupid, oh, stupid, yes. stupid. Especially because Mike said, let's keep it one week, and I'm like, no, no. Daniel Jones, Mitch Trubisky, who'd you rather have in a dynasty? <laughs> oh, go, yeah. go. 
Daniel I'm, Jones. I'm biased. I can't I'm, answer the question. I'm in because Mitch Trubisky is never going to be a good enough quarterback to get the job done. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head and Shoulders and Walmart. One week reactions. That's all I wanted to bait <laughs> out there and give Jason an opportunity to disparage, disparage Trubisky yeah. despite the three touchdown game. We'll see what happens. All right. Defense versus offense presented by Head and Shoulders, our favorite team defense special team streamers heading into week four. I said it earlier. I'm going to go with the Packers reimagined I I can dig talented it, defense against Philadelphia. Hard to imagine starting the Packers against Philly when the season began. Philly is banged up. They have been very uneven offensively. They've given up double-digit fantasy points to their past two defenses against them, which were Atlanta and Detroit. Packers are more than capable of doing that, and so I like them. Even if Jeffrey's back, you don't have you're not going to have Deshaun Jackson this week as that threat over the top. I like the Packers defense this week. I do. I like the Packers defense as well. Another defense that I like. I think you can pick them up and play them. Taking the, the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Steelers are home favorites. They forced four turnovers from the handsome one, Jimmy Garoppolo, this past week. El and Andy Dalton's like, hold my beer. And Andy Dalton will be playing against this team. Now, is, this is the this, this is, is a primetime game? Primetime Dalton. That's okay. a minimum six picks. If you've played fantasy football or – Watched the Cincinnati Bengals for any amount of time. You know that Andy Dalton in a primetime matchup is a special type of quarterback. We'll see if that continues to be that bad. But I think the Steelers are a fine play. Andy Dalton week. was going to be my stream of the week. I went to put him in I until I realized it was primetime, and he always – He has performed in primetime. I remember him getting interviewed on a Sunday night game. after. Remember that season they started like 11-1 and one or whatever it was? He's had a few good games in primetime, and this is a chance to beat a Steelers team, but I like the pick. I mean, Dalton gives you what Carson Wentz is giving you right now, yep. just yeah. an opportunity to, to score. You're looking for turnovers. You're looking for sacks. You're looking for low points, and that's why I'm taking the Colts at home against the Oakland Raiders. The Colts got off to I love a that. really hot start last week against, uh, against Atlanta, but Matt Ryan – Got it together. It was a really difficult matchup. But Derek Carr has been doing this thing where he takes the ball and he throws it to the other team. And I think the Colts are going to do that. I think they're going to get Does sacks. Does he do it on purpose or on accident? I think it's on accident. <laughs> but you can't tell. When you watch the film, you're like, did he mean to do that? They're obviously they're, they're down to two weapons on offense. I don't know if Josh Jacobs is going to get healthy enough to, to be right. But sure, Darren Waller, he can get his. Goo -goo -goo, uh, goo 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 the walrus. I love the quote about needing to get Josh Jacobs more targets in the offense. And I was like, more than zero? That'd be good. Uh, the the guy who was awesome? Yeah. It was an awesome pass catcher in college. And you currently should get has, targets? I think, three targets on the year, something uh, like that. Yeah, you should probably do that. Josh yeah. Jacobs, to me, is a buy low. Because I, 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 agree I with really that. think I the last two that. weeks were a lot to do with his illness. More and and then and then the subsequent blowout losses. I think if he's not dealing with that in these losses, he is the late round comeback. Get those little chunk plays. Uh, but I, I I still love the Colts in this matchup. All right, head and shoulders offense for your hair, defense for a flake free scalp. Check it out on at Walmart.com or at your local Walmart. Our streaming defensive picks of the week: the Packers, D, the Steelers, the Colts. Obviously, we're looking for guys. Uh, for teams that you can pick up off the waiver wire uh, tomorrow. Remember, you've got the couple of bye weeks this week. It's going to be a very interesting, you know, we're kind of entering the, uh, you know, got some data finally, right? Yeah. You know, when when you look at, we have these consistency charts that we put up on uh, for our foot clan at jointhefoot.com, and they kind of, give you a, a mental image of the data of, of how these players are performing over multiple weeks. A lot of our algorithms and our analytics are based on fantasy points against at each position. So after three weeks, you start to understand things like, I don't know, the Arizona Cardinals, you're going to want to start your tight ends against the Arizona Cardinals and similar things like that. So uh, as we get into our starts of the week on Thursday, these matchups for week four, it's nice to have a few weeks worth of data to provide 
uh, more insight, predictability, and how these pl- how these teams are going to play. And on Thursday we have what the Packers and the the Eagles. Yes. So that'll be a pretty interesting Thursday night game. Slightly more enticing than the one we had last week. Go buy Devonta Adams if you can. Yes. I agree with that. I agree. I went. I, I genuinely went to trade for him. Oh that, no, it's not going to happen. And then I saw he was on your team, and yeah. I was like, crap. <laughs> I still believe. Well, I, yeah, it, I don't think it's a belief, not belief, because he's a player that, you know, he's not going to give you nothing. He's a great player. He's just waiting for that top five performance that we haven't had yet. and He's had real tough matchups. The I thought he could succeed a little bit more, but Chris Harris was, was great against him. And then you had his own. You had his quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, lamenting the fact that Devonta Adams only had four targets this past week. I think the squeak wheel is going to get the grease on Thursday night. Was he squeaking, though? Yeah, was, was, was squeaky was, wheel's going to give the grease. Because uh, Aaron Rodgers was the squeaky wheel in that situation. Well, I just I, th- I think that that... I don't think the a, wheel's squeaky at all, and Rodgers just wants to give extra grease. That's what I think. I think Devonta Adams went up to Aaron Rodgers at the end of the game and said, bro, four targets? And then Aaron Rodgers said, you know what? You're right. Maybe so this they is, won. Yeah, that's that's but the hardship about If you're about squeaking all this. after a win, you should get half the amount of targets I think as, a, this was, as a punishment. You should get half the grease. I think this was Aaron Rodgers was up on the wagon, and then he's like, I think that wheel's squeaky. I'm going to give it some grease. Do they grease we- wagon wheels? Yeah. Oh, you had to. Did you, you play Oregon Trail? Do you grease your, like, regular <laughs> car wheel is Any, so you, anything where there's friction you so have you, to put grease so in, when you're factoring this big journey you have to bring a bunch of grease with you have to yes really unless or, you want squeaky wheels oh uh, yeah it's the worst is it really the squeak or is it is it the, can can wood squeak sure. yes sure really can. yeah isn't it more of a rustle a rustle wilson <laughs> We want to thank the studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, for another great episode of the show. We thank Pristine for providing all the material for the show. Now, Deontay Johnson signed jersey, 46 bucks. Check him out, pristineauction.com. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. Today's episode of the show brought to you by Muggsy Jeans, the most comfortable jeans ever made. That, that's no exaggeration, Mike. Nope. Muggsy's high-tech fabrics are so soft, so flexible. So soft. They literally feel as comfortable as sweatpants. Do your legs a favor. Head to Muggsy.com. Grab your own pair of ridiculously comfortable jeans today. Listeners can use the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off. That's M-U-G-S-Y.com with the code FOOTBALLERS for $10 off a pair of Muggsy Jeans.